For the first time in four years, the Federal Reserve is cutting its benchmark lending rate. The central bank began raising this rate in order to fight high inflation, and for more than a year, that rate has sat at a 23-year high. So what does this mean for Nevada's housing market and for Nevada consumers? For that, we welcome John Restrepo, principal of RCG Economics. And John, the Federal Reserve is cutting this rate by a half point. Some economists thought it would be by just a quarter point. What do you make of this? I think there are two things that the, the, the federal uh, the federal uh, chairman, uh, uh, Jerome Powell, said today. Uh, the inflation, the reduction in inflation is on a steady downward path. So they felt comfortable, okay, is that that superheated, we're going in the right direction, number one. And number two, uh, the job market is healthy and they want to ma maintain it healthy. So they're, they're trying to calibrate the rates to a, uh, the interest rate to a lower rate of inflation into a steady job market. So what do you make of the timing, though? There were supposed to be cuts earlier this year. Yeah, I think at this point, I think the Fed saw the significant drop off in the job growth numbers at the national level. They're not the jobs are declining, just the number of jobs producers being has slowed down. And the rate of inflation has now been sustained at a lower rate for an, enough time to go, okay, we can we feel comfortable maintaining these trends and let's let's uh, do this uh, 50 basis point increase, which as you m mentioned, uh, I think earlier, and they haven't done it in about four years. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty big, pretty big change, but it's probably one that I think the Fed needed to do to make sure things stay stable. Nevada is in a housing crisis. Supply Correct. just does not meet the demand. How does this cut impact that? Well, it, we, uh, as we're kind of discussing a little bit earlier, and that is that's going to create additional demand potentially, particularly if there's another quarter point to 50 basis point increase before the end of the year. So if there's two more meetings, I think two or three more, two more meetings of the Fed, and they could increase it either 225 basis point increases or 125, 150, 150, and that would increase demand for housing because interest rates are lower on mortgage rates. The challenge around for us, and not only here but around the country, is, is the problem is not hasn't been necessarily high interest rates causing housing prices uh, to not be in demand. It's a shortage of housing. Mm -hmm. So there has been just a supply constraint market that's caused by a variety of factors, uh, and so it, it could have a weird situation where the increase in interest rates could create mortgage demand and increase the demand for housing, right. as opposed to reducing housing price. And I think we have already seen that. Yep. starting to happen across the country. Right. Uh, just because the rate is cut does not mean that more homes, homes are, are going be to be produced. Magically exactly right. Created. Right. right. Well, so what about for someone who has been waiting to get a home loan or to refinance their home loan? Do they do that now or do they wait for further cuts? Wait, wait for further cuts. Wait to see what happens April, May of next year. We have time. Let's not rush into anything, you know, that big purchases like that, including cars and other things like that. So wait. Okay. Rushing usually, when you rush, you usually make a bad decision. <laughs> Things are going to change over time. Let, let's see how it all un, un, unfolds. I'm glad you brought up cars, though, because this will apply, apply to car loans oh, yeah, as well. What about credit cards? Credit card debt's a little, diff a little different. We do have excessive amounts of credit card debt right now. Because you know there's one thing Americans agree on, whether they're conservatives or liberals, is buying things on credit. <laughs> We, you know, we're not a, a society that lives within their means necessarily. And so credit card debt, it'll be a little bit of adjustment, but it's, they're so high as it is now, I don't think it'll make a big, big difference. You'll notice a difference if you start seeing a greater volume of credit card offers in the mail to your house. Uh -huh. If you see that kind of pattern in, in, the, in, the, in mail delivery, then you know something's going on. But I don't think it's going to have that much of an impact on credit card uh, debt or, or interest rates. You talked about the labor market nationally. How would you describe Nevada's labor market right now? And are you concerned that the slowing, the cooling of the labor market will impact Nevada? No, I, I, not yet. Remember, we're, we're, our, the health of our uh, mark, uh, economy and the health of our job market is really driven by the health of the economy and the rest of this country and, in, and internationally because we're basically a tourist destination. And so as long as that stays healthy, we'll do f fine. I think we'll do fine. I think the bigger issue for Southern Nevada is we still have a lot of lo low wage workers. So the cost of living versus wages is kind of an out of sync compared to the, to the U.S. As, as a whole. Uh, to me, the bigger concern for the job market, at least in the intermediate term, let's say the f next five to ten years, 
as far as anyone knows what's going to happen 10 years from now, is a question of AI, mm -hmm. automation, robotics, and what that does to our labor market and what kind of displacement, at least initially, will occur with uh, people losing their jobs because of AI. Are there particular sectors you're concerned the about? The resort industry. Hmm. It's in uh, most of the economic surveys or research on this, the hospitality industry around the country is the one that's been affected the most by AI or automation, robotics, however you want to call it. And uh, it's, it looks like it'll be the same one over, over the longer term, so I'm concerned about that. Yeah, hence why the culinary union has gotten some of those AI that's protections. Correct. That's correct. The Nevada consumer, when might they feel that inflation truly is lowered? You know, the question is how you define inflation, right? Uh, folks understand that the rate of inflation or the rate of price increases is slowing, which is good, but they're still pretty high at the pump, right, right. or, or at, at the store. Mm -hmm. So until you see prices actually coming down, the price of food, the price of fuel, you know, those are two most volatile things then you, you kind of understand intellectually, okay, the rate of increase is not getting worse. In other words, what I paid for gas six months ago is the same, mm -hmm. so it's not getting worse, but it's not getting better. Right. Uh, and so that we don't know. Will it ever yeah. get back to prior to when inflation to, to, reaches prior to the 2020, 2019, 2020 levels? Probably not. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. Uh, prices get set. You know, and they kind of stay steady. Very rarely do prices drop that dramatically. It's got to be a really bad recession. Now, th that would come. You could see a lot of, you could, you could see a pretty significant price decrease on products and services if you have a deep recession, but you don't want that. You'd rather have elevated prices and a healthy economy and healthy people with jobs as, so high, as opposed to a high unemployment rate but lower prices. You know right. what I mean? And Pick your poison, so to speak. <laughs> right? We always have to ask you, what are your thoughts on a possible recession? I don't think we're going to see that any, anytime soon. I think there's going to be a slowing in the economy. Uh, I think the markets are indicating that, uh, and when I say the markets, the, not the general market, not the, not the stock market necessarily, that a recession is not likely. There will be a cooling off to the economy. Remember, uh, we have, we're at a 5%, a little over 5% unemployment rate in Nevada. That used to be considered good, hmm. healthy. A healthy economy was 5%. That's what all the economists were taught. That's what I was taught when I was in school. We now have, a, have had a period where we've had very low unemployment. So to go to 5%, we think is a catastrophe. It really isn't because you need some excess um, number of people in the job market, uh, I mean, uh, 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 to, to fill new jobs that come into play. And so I don't see, well, I don't see a recession. I see, I see a cooling off. Okay. A cooling off. The uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell at the press conference following this announcement of yeah. the decision said this is his fourth presidential election that he's been in the Fed right. during, during this time frame. Um, the Fed operates independently from the government. However, there could be an impact on the election. Or that's my question for you. Do you think this decision will impact the election? No. Why not? Because um, it takes time for an, an interest rate cut like this to really flow through the economy and see the effects of it, right? So we don't know who it will benefit at this point. And so even if it, regardless of who benefits from which we either candidate, uh, uh, Vice President Harris or former President Trump, uh, it's going to take time to see the economic effects at, at the, on Main Street, so to speak, uh, for the average consumer to say, ah, but because they did this, that helped. It's going to take time. So we only have, what, 40, 50 days to the election. It's not enough time to really make a difference at this point. Is there anything to be taken from the fact that former President Trump appointed Jerome Powell and President Biden kept him in place? No, because the Fed is independent. And that's the greatest strength of having an independent central bank. I think Chairman Powell said it really well earlier today in the press conference night is, all uh, uh, countries that have an independent central bank have the most stable democracies, have the most stable economies. The last thing you want to do is have politics involved in, 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 uh, in, in, in a, a Federal Reserve or central bank decisions. And so as long as we keep that independence, regardless who, who gets a, who points who, I think it's, it's the best way to stay. John Restrepo, RCG Economics, thank you for joining Nevada. Thank you, Amber. Appreciate it.